I'm gonna start off by saying I have no interest in making this video. But I feel so called to make this video that I'm going to. The other thing is I'm gonna turn off comments on this video. There's this person, woman, that I can't get off my mind. And I went to church today and I was just like, take this from me, take this from me, take this from me. I'm so tired of thinking about this person. It is driving me crazy. I have never gone through anything like this in my life. I have a couple examples. So when the ex of 16 years left in late July, I saw her out. I watched her drive away. I walked in the house in every, almost every single memory. I got it, water. Almost every single memory that I had of our entire, almost two decades together was gone. It's like it never even happened. I don't get bothered by this stuff. I have, when I've really reflected back on my day, I've actually dated a lot more people than I remembered. And it doesn't bother me when it's over. This ended over four months ago now. I miss this person more now than I did when it broke off. And I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. So I went to church. I keep going to church. I said, take this from me. I want to wake up tomorrow. I don't even want to remember this person's name. And it just keeps not happening. It just keeps not happening. And then today I was at church and the voice that the Holy Spirit that I call it was like, make a video about it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They, uh, people already think I'm crazy enough. I'm not making a damn video about this. And it just keeps telling me, make a video, make a video, make a video. So I'm not going to tell the whole thing. I actually have the whole thing written down in multiple notebooks. It's been a lot. I've, I've never been through anything like this in my life. Now that I got that out of the way, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack two years ago. And I'm not going to tell a story for two years, but I, I'm going to backtrack two years ago. What I was calling at that time my intuition, which has never been wrong. I'm now calling the Holy Spirit after reading the Bible like crazy. The Holy Spirit told me that... I was going to, so this is late 2022, that I was going to meet somebody in the coming year. And I was hoping that it was going to be sooner rather than later. And actually, I was talking to somebody at this time, and I thought, maybe it's her. But I went to pray about it, and they're like, get rid of her. It's not going to work out. So that, that happened, and then the ex needed a place to stay, so I told her that she could move in with me. She was living somewhere else. She moved in here, the one that just left. And we didn't rekindle anything. It was basically a roommate situation. There was one night, but that was the night she got here. And then after that, I'm like, this can't be. This is just, you're here until you're not. And so later on that year, last year, in October, so in 20, this is, there's so much involved in this story. So after the Holy Spirit had told me that I was going to meet somebody in the next year, or next year in 2023, last year, I had a dream that night. And in that dream, I was shown a woman in a picture at a like table or something like that. And I wish I was making this up because I feel nuts. I, I feel crazy for this whole thing. Now the person involved with this doesn't know that. I didn't ever tell her because I didn't want her thinking I'm even crazier sometimes. Or like, I just, I have visions and they're always right. I had this, I saw, saw this picture. It was not very well taken. It was just a picture. Sure enough, October of last year, this woman kept coming on and liking my images that I had posted on Instagram and I'm like I, I would go in to the little heart thing and it gives you the notifications and at this time I actually had a fairly large amount of women liking my stuff um, and but she's the only one that I would notice she was the only one that I would notice out of all of them 
I'm like, I don't know, there's something about her. And one day I had this intuition, I, it said, you never, you never look at the stories, why don't you just go check somebody's out? And of course her little face was there and she's the only one that I clicked on and it was for Candy. And I just, I, I said something kind of uh, funny about it and we laughed and things just kind of went from there. But they were always very strange. I knew, and then I went through her profile and sure enough, that damn picture that I had been shown in my dream, the only person that knows about that picture is my mother, because I told her about this dream. And sure enough, that picture was there. Wow, I mean, it's, it was like a one for one. I'm like actually getting almost, I'm like getting like, not even goosebumps, like heat bumps running through my arm right now. This is just such crazy. And so I'm like, okay, uh, cool. But she was like, really not the greatest at communicating. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, did I, are you sure? Like, and it's like, yeah, yes, yes. So I'm not going to tell the whole story. So we, we go through that year and the ex of 16 years wasn't having the fact that I was talking to this new person and things were getting really ugly. And I was trying to just not be at the house and everything like that which I kind of understand, but like, honestly, if she was dating somebody, I wouldn't give her shit over it. And it kind of went through, we kept going through these weird phases. And then the one that I had met and she lives in a different state, different city. Uh, you know, we would back off and then it would be on and then we'd back off and everything like that. And I don't want to tell too much. I had this all written down because if this actually works out in the, in the long run, I, I do want to tell this story somewhat. So I ended up meeting up with her in the city that she lives in and things were insane. We were magnetic. It was crazy. Even at the day after she described it as going almost too perfectly. And then things kind of, fell off again and then they were back on again and then they fell off again uh and that is kind of where things fell off fell off and so I, i'm kind of want to talk a little bit about that week so that week was the week of the eclipse and the eclipse was on a monday everything was fine actually on that sunday we had a great conversation monday was fine tuesday was fine then wednesday the ex that was living with me comes out in the kitchen and starts flipping out on me. And if anybody knows me, I don't yell. I don't, it's just not my thing. I started shouting at this woman. I, the neighbors I know were hearing it. I told her, get out of my house. You are just, it's just, I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of, of hearing you like go. You were only supposed to be here for a few months. And then later on that day, the, other one hung up on me for no real reason I could figure out. Then Thursday was she was real funny with me. And then Friday she broke things off. And I'm like, there's like this dual parallel thing going on here. And while she was doing it, I was like, I'm watching this, but I'm not watching this person. Like this person and I just by text had texted each other 16,793 times in four months. And then I don't know how many times on Instagram combined, it was a lot. And then we would talk some days for 12 hours. I knew this person and she's so similar to me that it's like, you can't lie to me. So when she was doing it, I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm not watching you. You are, you are not present in this moment right now. And I don't know what happened that day. It was like watching, uh, watching something that I didn't want to see. So I started really praying about this, praying about that. I couldn't figure this out. I'm like, you told me about this woman. You told me that everything was going to uh, go exactly as you told me to. You told me we were going to be together. And then it, it's just, it's done. Right. And I'm like, I want, I want this out of my memory. I don't want to think about this. I don't even want any part of this whatsoever. I kept trying 
to forget her. Now, this is over four months now, right? I've never gone through anything like this, never even close to going through anything like this. Even in my divorce, I didn't care that much. I was gonna miss sex and that was it. All right, so it's the morning after I made this video and I was somewhat reminded of things that a point talking points I didn't get to so here we are um, I am gonna talk about this voice at some point in this video I think I kind of already did um, I was reminded to tell you guys that in February I was actually told that in sometime in April that there was going to be a separation between this person and I and so I was kind of expecting it when it hit I was pretty calm during it I was trying to remind her of kind of how ridiculous this is because we get along so well there's so many commonalities that I will talk about in a couple minutes um yeah so what else did I have right, written here uh I was pretty calm when it happened but I just I could see that she was extremely angry and crying at the same time. And it's like, it reminded me of times when I was doing something that I did not want to do and I knew was not the right thing, but I was doing it anyways. That's what it reminded me of. And afterwards, I, um, I'm like, all right, you know, like, I know what you told me, like I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, I know what you told me, I said, I just don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with this, I don't feel like dealing with this at all, please just remove this from me, let me wake up tomorrow and not even remember any of this, kind of like, I left this 16 year relationship, it had been done, she, I mean, but she left and it's like my brain immediately erases any existence of this woman whatsoever. And yet this person that I met six months ago, I, I can't like, it's not like it's taking over my life. It's not like I'm not getting stuff done. It's not like I haven't started this new, you know, photography project. It's not like it, it's to the point where I just sit around the house and, you know, think about it, but it is always there. And I'm like, I don't understand this at all. And then I start getting all these downloads of what she was going through and why she did what she did. And I don't know if any of this is true because I haven't really spoken to her other than like one, one or two times since this has happened. And so I, I don't know if any of this is true, but I kept getting like these random downloads or like I'd be on Instagram and I'd see a reel and it would start talking about, you know, stuff. And, I, and then I would immediately be reminded of conversations that her and I had had about, you know, certain things. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is why, you know. But it's just like, like, I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask for like this to go the way it did. I didn't ask for all these downloads. I didn't ask for like, any of this like it's just like it's it's been nuts like it, the amount of downloads and i've i've got four of these like i said of information because this voice the holy spirit has told me to document all of this stuff so i have you know i knew that the divorce needed to happen it was sad i went through a period I dealt with it. I didn't try to reclimate anything. I didn't even want it to be reclimated. I wanted it to be over. This situation, I never wanted it to be over, but we were both kind of self-sabotaging in, in different ways. It was almost inevitable, but I, I keep praying, like, take this from me, take this from me, take this from me. And then one night I had a dream that says, you know, stop pushing this person away. And I'm like, well, I don't understand any of this. So then there would be times in this last four months where I would completely forget the whole thing. And then I would be walking uh, down the street and somebody would literally just say her name, nothing else, just her name. I'm like, I would literally turn to this person. I'm like, what? 
And they're like, well, I wasn't talking to you. I said, what, what did you just say? And they would say this name. I said, who are you talking to? This happened to me three times. Not to mention all the other times that I would hear her name like in just conversation. And she doesn't have that common of a name. I rarely even heard this name before I met her. And I'm like, what, what is going on? Or somebody would pull in front of me with a license plate with her name on it. Several times, like it would be her exact initials with different numbers on it from the city she lives in. I'm like, what the fuck? What am I going through? Or from the state that she lives in. I'm like, what am I going through? It's like, it, I'm not able to forget this whole thing at all. If I, I, I'm making this video mostly because I was told to, and if maybe somebody's going through this, you can watch this video and I don't know if it helps anybody. So yesterday, last night, I'm sitting upstairs and I'm scrolling on Instagram because I was like, I haven't done interviews in a while. I haven't done interviews in a long time. And um, so the voice is like, well, why don't you go through you know, your messages and, and look at some of the people that you've interviewed and send them messages and see if you can uh, uh, you know, start some interviews or you know, schedule some interviews. So I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I come across this person who had deactivated their account in my messages. And I'm like, why? this was not, like, when did this appear? Because it was gone after she deactivated her account. All right, I assume I'm in focus. I'm editing this. This is gonna be a much longer video than I wanted it to be. But scrolling through messages is something I never do either. And ironically, only one person of the seven or eight that I messaged responded back to me at all, which is rare. And it's also rare for me to go through messages because if you've ever messaged me and I message you, to, you back, it's usually like one or two words. Like I'm not very good at it, right? Even my best friend of since 1986, he and I have been friends. He messages me and I'll, if I respond at all, it's just like two words. So the th fact that I was actually going through my messages at all was rare or I, actually I've never done it. <laughs> and then nobody responded back to me. I even emailed two people that, that, that aren't on Instagram that I've interviewed who only do things by email. They didn't respond back to me either. So it's like, I was only told to do this just so I would see this name. I'm like, what kind of torture are you trying to put me through? This is not, it's, this is crazy. Anyway. So I click on it and of course she blocked me. Fair enough. And then I, for whatever reason, wanted to see if she had blocked me on the newest account that she wouldn't have known about or a couple of the other accounts that she wouldn't have known about that I have on Instagram that I've never mentioned other than the one. And sure enough, all but a couple of them, she's blocked me on. But the newest one, she would not have known about. This newest one, I started about a month ago, which means she's watching me or somebody that she knows is watching me. So I can only assume that she might have gone through, and I've kind of been told, I've through this whole thing, I've been given these weird messages about this situation that I should not know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, it just, I'm guessing she's watching or something like that. I was told to make this video. Maybe she'll see it. I don't even know what this video is. It's just, I've never met anybody that I just, I had such feelings for. She's like everything that I'm not, everything she loved about herself, I loved. Everything that she didn't love about herself, I loved. I mean, it was just like this crazy connection. I mean, who? All right. so. More along the lines of, you know, what I just said, I just saw her as my exact equal. I would do anything for her. It, this was the first time that this has ever happened. Like I've never thought like I would do any, anything for this woman. I would become, you know, a better person for this person. I, and I, I just, it, there was, we, we got, we could talk about anything. It was almost like 
we were almost children. Like there was so much fun. Like we could just be ourselves. And I've never had that. I've never had anybody understand me before to this level ever in my life. It was refreshing. I didn't have to explain myself to this person. We had projects that we wanted to work on. Um, that I had projects from like almost decades ago that I wanted to work on, that I wanted a counterpart. And she had the exact same goals and she would send me these notes and stuff like that. I'm like, how is this, how is this possible? We never really argued, although I would have read it, rather argued about this whole thing than just have it just slip away like this. I would much rather have just gone to war over something, still kind of would, 100% just it it was so flawless that and it's it's weird in my notebook actually back there i get notebooks everywhere two years ago i had written down what my ideal woman would be she was like almost every one of them i couldn't have put this to get a, a person together better if I tried, and I'm not saying I manifested this, I'm saying like, this was just, she was just everything I've ever looked for in somebody. Like when we met in person, it, it was so magical. And I know like pretty much every day could be like that, her and I. We were uh, like magnetic. We were like attached at the hip. We kept running into each other. She went to the bathroom one time and she kind of like ran back because she didn't want to be separated. I don't, I don't understand what has happened. I really don't. Who texts that much? Who talks that much when you guys actually talk? And then she would, then she would just disappear for a little while. And then I just figured maybe somebody had broken her heart at some point and she didn't, she has this like, thing about being committed or you know commit, co committing to anybody or something i don't know all i can say is this has been the strangest year of my life and i it, it is not like it doesn't have competition it's not it's not like it doesn't have competition and some of the accounts i i don't i, I don't even know what magic she would have used because it's not connected to me at all <sighs> anyway I don't even feel like publishing this video. There's so much more I want to say, but I already feel like a lunatic for what I've been through. I'm guessing, I could be wrong, that she's also going through similar situation, similar issue or similar like things that I have, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. But this has been a roller coaster that I have begged to get off of for four months now, and it just doesn't stop. I'm sure there's a lot more that I probably was supposed to say in this video, but she's a very private person and I don't wanna to go too far. Uh, another thing I, I wanted to say at some point, at, like I don't want any ill will for this woman at all. I know she knows that, especially because her actions speak louder than words. I'll just say rolling down the window. Uh, she'll know what that means. Um, I wish her nothing but the best. I really do. She's, she's doing something that she wanted to accomplish. I wish her nothing but the best. I know she'll do it. But this has been something that I didn't ask for. I did not ask to continually think about this person, it drives me crazy. Like I said, it's not affecting my day, but it's like, all right, like, I, you know. All right, so I don't even know if I'm in focus. I went for a walk, so I'm a little sweaty, but one of the things also that I was going through the entire time that we were talking was I was getting so severely attacked from like, I swear it was like the devil telling me like, you're not good enough. She's going to leave. You're not good enough. Why would anybody stay with you? You know, it, it just the entire time. And after the whole separation thing, it got so bad 
that I couldn't even sleep some nights. I mean, this whole thing has been nothing short of like something that you would see in a movie that you're like, thank God I'm not going through that. But here we are. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever really make a video about it. It like, it's like one of those pebbles, like if a pebble gets in your foot and, or in your shoe and it's just like irritating your foot and you can't, you know, it's just like always there. I, it was like put on my brain to make this video. So here it is. I can't really think of anything else, but yeah, I mean the attacks. So I had like, I literally had like the, like the angel and the devil on my shoulders. Like one of them was like, no, it's everything's going to be fine eventually. And the other one was like, no, you know, like you're an idiot. Why would you even bother with this? There's, you know, way too good for you or whatever. And it has just been, I mean, I don't even want to say some of the stuff that was being said in my head, largely because I, you know, it, it was, it was awful. It was really awful. I don't know what else to say. I, there's so much. I mean, I have notebooks of stuff that I've been told and I've seen and everything. Like, I, I feel like I am in one of the stories in the Bible. <laughs> like, like, everybody thought that, like Noah, for example, everybody thought he was nuts. He was building this sh huge ship and then the floods came. Or, you know, Job went nuts. Or uh, Maybe I just have gone full, full on... Full metal jacket. I have no idea. But again, the voice told me to make this video. Here I am. I wanted to talk about the voices, <laughs> the voice in my head, because it sounds kind of schizophrenic, but I know all of us kind of have that voice in our head, right? And I believe that there's like three voices in our head. There's the voice, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, intuition, whatever you want to call it. Then there's the middle voice, which is like anxiety, OCD, uh, just not great, like an overwhelming, you know, like this feeling of like anxiety, basically. And then there's like the devil, right? Like t reminding you of everything you're not, everything you can't do, everything that's not going to happen, everything, you know, like it's like the most negative voice in the world. And I know that there, it reminds me of the Bible verse, I do know the good shepherd and I know his voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Like the devil is the stranger and I won't follow that. The voice of the shepherd is a voice that will put you in uncomfortable situations. It will remind you of things. It will calm you down. It will tell you what's going to happen. And it's not always the most comfortable thing. Like girls that I've wanted to date in the past, it's like, no, drop this one. It's, it's never gonna work. I didn't wanna hear that, but you know, it was always right. Or it would tell me after an interview, like you're gonna get this job, you really don't need to go look for anything else. Uh, you know, there's no point. Or, it, you know, just any gamut of, of things, like it's always, always right. Or it'll tell you, like, for me, for example, I'll have a day where I just don't really feel like doing, uh, going out, but it's like, all right, just go get your camera, just go, uh, you know, photograph something, and it'll turn into like this great, great thing, right? It's that voice that you don't know why it knows everything that it knows, but it's always right, and it always knows everything, and it's, it's almost irritating. <laughs> Um, to, to some level because it, it never is wrong. Then there's that middle voice that really is just all of the things that could possibly go wrong, it just reminds you of them. And then there's like the voice of the stranger who you don't want to deal with, who absolutely can't stand you. Like the anxiety is just your fight or flight the voice of a stranger hates everything about you and you can tell so that is the three voices that i have been referencing in this video i don't know what to say this has been by far the craziest i mean i can't tell you how weird my life has been but this one is really taking the cake and I ask every day, I said, take this away from me. I don't even want to know this woman's name anymore.
Now, if she wanted to reconcile or whatever, I'd be open to talking, but if that's never going to be on the table, then I, I want it to be done. <laughs> like, I just want it to be done. If it's going to be on the table, and this intuition has never lied to me, ever. Holy Spirit has never lied to me, ever. <sighs> Fine. And the last thing that I will say is I have been told, I, I know how crazy all of this sounds. I'm well aware. I did not again want to make this video. Here we are. I have been told if this person comes back to treat her like the prodigal son who left for a time thought they wanted to live a different life and they returned and there was a huge celebration. And I am not a grudge holder. I am not bitter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that sort of thing. This has been the most bizarre thing I have ever been through. And like I said, it's not like it doesn't have competition. But here we are, I've, I'm making this video uh, I already actually had the video done and then I woke up and it's like, you got to add this stuff in. And I know when you talk about having voices in your head, it sounds like schizophrenia. I'm actually like the most just down to earth person you're ever going to meet. And I know, I know how this stuff sound makes me sound. And this isn't me like creating all of this stuff to try to relive this because I don't I don't want that I don't want to do that like at all if she comes back great but this is not me this is this stuff I I'd normally just drop things I just right out the window and move on something is not letting me move on from this and it's not me So that is it. Also, I don't, I know I've sounded really serious in this video. I know I've sounded really serious in this video. This has been a lot. Uh, it, it's not, it's not really like nobody actually who meets me knows that this is happening. Actually, nobody in my, like somebody told me the other day that I seem happier in my videos. Like this isn't dragging me down, but it's just like this thing that, that's going on. And I'm like, uh, Okay, so I, I just wanted to point that out there as well. We're both, we've both been through a lot. Her and I have both been through a lot, whether together or separately. And I don't blame her for what she did. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if the ex had something to do with this. But yes, I cannot believe I'm making this video. I don't want to make this video, but I made this video and I was told to put it out. If you feel like messaging me about this, if you're anybody, she's going to know who she is. If you're anybody else, it, here's another thing. The Bible that I have that I got for Christmas in 2008, the publishing company, their initials are her initials. The, my favorite park that I like to go to, it's initials are her initials. I got this, I should have brought it over. So like what started this photography project of mine was I went over my, I, so I was cleaning out over here and I had a bunch of stuff and there was, Six rolls of expired film. This was on a Sunday. There were six rolls of expired film. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. And I actually have a, I have a couple of film cameras, but when I went over my parents' house that day, my mom all of a sudden, out of nowhere, was like, oh, I've got this film camera. I didn't even tell them about this happening. And my mom's like, oh, I got this film camera um, from your grandfather. Do you want it? 
I said, sure. I thought it was going to be a Pentax because it's the, that was like one of his favorites, but it's a Canon. And one of the lenses, I pulled the, the cap off the lens, and this will make sense to this person. The serial number was 32224. Three of the people that I photographed for whatever reason uh, in this last couple, like month or whatever, have had the tattoo 222 two, two on them. The craziest part is, is my grandfather was in the city this woman lives in in 1966 and bought this lens in the city she lives in 14 years before I was born. And then I get it as she hands it to me. I am not lying. I really wish I was making this up and I could just erase this and I didn't even have to tell this story. As I open and take the cap off of this lens and notice the serial number, her initials were on my parents' TV for a Taco Bell ad. I'm like, you just can't even make this stuff up. I don't know who's the orchestrator of this, but it's certainly not me. And I... I don't even know what else to say. I, I, I mean, I, I've got entire four of these, four, and this isn't it, but four of these, full of these weird ass synchronicities that have happened in the last four months. And really I included some of this of weird stuff that happened before I met her. I don't know what to say about this anymore. I don't know what to say about that. I've all the I've said this like probably five times. I don't know what to even say about the, like I don't even understand what I'm going through right now. I'm guessing that at some level she is also going through this. Otherwise, that would <laughs> probably suck even more. I'm like sh shaking a little because I really don't want to make this video, but here it is. I still, my ideal outcome would be us to reconcile because it's clear to me, I should not miss somebody more four months later. I've never had this happen. Four months after than I do the day we broke it off. She broke it off. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't happen. It, this should not exist And any way, shape, or form. And even with, I beg every day, I'm tired of dealing with this. And every day it's there. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know what else I'm supposed to say about it other than like, <laughs> wow. I don't need, this is why I don't watch movies. I've got my own life. People don't, people don't even believe me. I don't even believe it. It's weird because the day that I met her, the, the as I texted her for the first time in that story, I watched a movie that was almost this exact story that I'm living out right now. And I hadn't watched a movie for like three years before that. I hope everybody made it this far because there's a lot of just intertwining bullshit in this whole thing. I literally saw a movie of what I'm going through the day I started talking to her. It's crazy. Anyway, that is it. I, 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 could, I could literally, I got four, four notebooks. But I don't want to go too detailed. Anyway, talk to you in the next one.